Api dhamma in daily life by Ashen Janaka Biwansa. The wise overwhelmed by delusion. The Bodhisattva, Haridasa by name, having renounced the world, abandoning his immense wealth of eight crores of money, became a hermit and attained the great supernatural power, Jana Abhinya. Then, as the rains were heavy in the Himalayas, he came to Baranasi and stayed in the king's garden. The king of Baranasi was his old friend, who was fulfilling perfections, Barami, to become the venerable Ananda. Therefore, as soon as he saw the hermit, he revered him so much that he asked him to stay in the royal garden and supported him with four requisites. He himself used to offer the hermit morning meals at the palace. Once a rebellion broke out in the country, the king himself had to go out to quell it. Before setting out with his army, he requested the queen again and again not to forget to look after the hermit. The queen did as told. One early morning, she took a bath with scented water and put on fine clothes and lay down on the couch, awaiting for the hermit. The Bodhisattva came through space with his supernormal power, Abhinya, and arrived at the palace window. Hearing the flutter of the hermit's robe, the queen hastily rose from her couch, and her dress fell off her. Seeing the naked queen, the Anusya Moha, which lay dormant in his mind continuum, rose to the stage of Priyotana Moha, and filled with lust, he took the queen's hand and committed immoral transgression like a monster ogre. Note. We should consider the stupidity arising through moha in this story seriously. If such moha did not appear in him, he would not have committed such as evil deed, even with the king's consent. But at the time, being overwhelmed by the darkness of delusion, he was unable to see evils of deed in the present and in future existences throughout Sansara and consequently committed such improper transgression. The jhana abhinya, which he acquired through practice for all his life, was unable to dispel the darkness of moha. Instead, being overwhelmed by moha, the jhana abhinya powers themselves vanished from him. But the hermit, being already quite matured in the perfection parami, learned a bitter lesson and greatly repented his deed on the return of the king. He endeavored again and again his jhana abhinya, and contemplating, I have done wrong because of dwelling in close proximity with the people, return to the Himalayas. Not knowing is not always moha. As moha is explained as not knowing, some people think that not knowing a subject which one has not studied not knowing places where one has not been to, not remembering names which one has not been acquainted with, are also moha. Such kind of not knowing is merely lack of knowledge. It is not real moha at all. Hence, it is not unwholesome mental factor. It is merely the absence of recognition, perceptions, sanya, not having perceived it before. Even arhats have such kind of not knowing, let alone ordinary common worldling. Even the venerable Shariputra, who is second only to the Buddha in wisdom, taught meditation practice inappropriate to a young bhikkhu. Thinking that the young bhikkhu was at the lustful age, he prescribed asubhagamatana, meditation on unpleasant objects, example decaying corpses, which did not go with his pupil's disposition. Even though the pupil meditated for four months, he could not get the slightest nimitta, sign of concentration. Then he was taken to the Buddha, who created and gave him a lotus blossom suitable to his disposition, and he was delighted. And when the Buddha showed him the lotus flower withering, he fell samvika, a religious sense of urgency. 
the Buddha then have the discourse designed to make him realize the characteristics of anicca, dukkha, anatta, and he became an arahant. Here, in note the infinite knowledge of the Buddha. Also note that there are things not known to the venerable Shariputra, who was already free from delusion. Thus, even the venerable Shariputra did not know things beyond his ken. Thus, not knowing things which have not been taught, and those which belong to the domain of the sages, is not moha. It is merely the frailty of their knowledge or learning. For example, take the case of a man who cannot see a faraway object in broad daylight. It is not due to a barrier concealing the object from eyesight. It is because of the weakness of his eyesight. Gross and fine moha, the moha which cannot discern between what is unwholesome or vice. And what is wholesome or virtue is rather gross. The moha, which prevents realization of anicca, dukkha, anatta, nature of mind and matter, the four noble truths, and the law of dependent origination, is comparatively fine moha. The mind, which is accompanied by moha, is called delusive mind, foolish mind. And one who is overpowered by delusion is called variously the fool, the nincompoop, the dumb, the dull, the wild, the stupid, the useless. This world is in utter darkness. Only few people in this world can perceive extraordinary, just as only a few birds can escape from the net. People can be reborn in the abode of devas after death. Are very few in number. Tamapada verse one hundred and seventy-four.